Pictorial. You've seen Papyrus this morning. He wasn't at breakfast. Hey, anyone here? Papyrus? Papyrus? Come on, are you here? Papyrus? Papyrus. Sands. What on earth are you yelling about? WH, what are you doing in Toriel's shower? I'm taking a shower, you numbskull. Our shower is busted and the plumber doesn't come until tomorrow, which you'd know if you'd bothered to read the note I left for you on the door. Oh. Naya, hey, hey. Something the matter? Oh, you're just a real barrel of laughs, aren't you, Bucko? I don't know. I think you freaking out over some marker scribbles is pretty funny. Don't think I'm not watching you. You try anything and I'll... What? You'll kill me? It'd be easy for you. It'd be smart, too. I can't reset on my own. You'd never have to worry about a reset, ever again, but I don't think you will. There's some part of you that's still hoping. Hoping that Frisk will come back, and if you took the initiative now, well, I doubt Frisk would enjoy coming back to a corpse. Just imagine trying to explain your actions to Toriel. Imagine the look on Papyrus's face. You know, I'm actually not the sort to jump to violent responses. So let's just talk. What is it that you want? You think if you just do what I want most, I'll leave Frisk alone? It's pointless to ask. No one can give me what I want. How about you just indulge me? You know, for funsies. I think it's more fun to keep you guessing. From what I've gathered out of Frisk, you're not one to care a lot. So it's much more interesting now that you feel like you've got something to lose, isn't it nice? To maybe care again? If no one can do anything for young, then I fail to see the point of you hanging around here now. Fooling all these people that love Frisk. You don't need to see any point. Maybe I want my reasons to stay mine, or maybe all I want is a little use out of Frisk's body while it's empty. Nice and roomy in here, so maybe you can just indulge me. You know, for funsies. Several quick shortcuts later, and the trio had exhausted all other possibilities as to where Gaster was. There was only one other place that he could possibly be, and that was where they were headed now to the side entrance to the core. While this place was a safe distance away from the apartment building that would eventually become Teton's resort, it was still bustling with people and activity. A large metal scaffold had been constructed leading up to the core's power base, and attached to it in an array of haphazard metal, wires and pipes, sat the time machine. Frisk recognized at least the shape of it from the curtained off remains in Sun's personal lab. Here, however, it seemed in much more of a complete piece. A team of scientists were running around, checking specs and readings, securing both the machine and the scaffolding to the enormous generator. The searing heat of the lava below them only made the scene more urgent and uncomfortable. Greatest Dog was the first to speak up about all their shared worry. Once they turn on the machine it'll break up space and time and hurt the whole underground. Could he even stop it? On this, Frisk wasn't sure. They knew they had to save Gast, but was it possible for them to do that without stopping the core implosion completely? I think we should just concentrate on finding Gaster and making sure he's nowhere nearby when the core implodes so we're just gonna let the implosion happen? Fleddy asked. 
We don't know what'll happen to all of us if the underground loses the ability for people to save and reset. The important thing is saving Gaster. So that's what we'll do this was at least something they could tenuously agree on. They started forward across the scaffolding, making sure to avoid the eyes of any scientists that might spot them and decide they weren't supposed to be here. They did see Papyrus, but as he was hammering away at a piece of scaffolding while also trying to encourage it to be properly attached already, they decided it better to not bother him. By the time they got to the machine itself, it was clear there was no sign of Gaster. There was one skeleton they still recognized, though and that was Sans, who was reading over a hefty pile of blueprints. He noticed them enter the machine's effect zone, and stepped forward, smiling but still looking a bit worried. Hey, pub, I thought you might show up here at some point. You need to stay back, this place is dangerous. They listened and took a step back onto the scaffolding itself, but still looked pretty anxious. It felt like everything was happening around them and they were powerless to stop it. All that worry read on their face pretty clearly, and Sans picked up on it just for the wrong reasons. Yeah, anxious, pub? I'm a little nervous myself. I know this is a risky venture, but it'll be worth it once we're back in time and can make peace with the humans he tried to offer them a genuine smile. And hey, you said yourself things would turn out alright. This didn't seem to make them feel any better. They just gave Sans a worried look, and kept pacing back and forth in front of him. Not being able to communicate this easily was beyond frustrating. I mean, I've got all of my notes and then some here to make sure we don't miss a thing. Sans held up something from his pile of papers, and squinted at it, suddenly looking confused. Held so much info here, I don't even remember what half of it was for all of a sudden, a faint buzzing sound came from what seemed like behind Sans. He definitely recognized the sound, no, and placed the stack of blueprints on the ground before pulling his cell phone out of his lab coat pocket. Uh, in me just a sec here, pub while Sans busied himself with the phone, the dog took the opportunity to look at some of the blueprints and notes that Sans had dropped in front of them. On top of what appeared to be a main blueprint for the time machine was a handwritten lock report except it seemed to be written in weird symbols, mostly made up of hand signals. What does this mean? Frisk asked, glancing over the notes frantically. Here let me. The dog shook out his head, and Flurry resumed control, peering closer at the notes. I can read this font you can. Frisk sounded surprised at this news. I can read any font. I had a lot of resets to mess with, and a lot of time to read every book in the underground. I talked myself to read every font there as Flurry scanned over the log note, and his eyes widened the symbols suddenly became all too familiar to them. Dark, darker, yet darker the darkness keeps growing the shadows cutting deeper photon readings negative this next experiment seems very, very interesting what do you two think? That's what Reaper Bird said when we talked to all the amalgams. Frisk exclaimed. It's the bad memories. Greatest dog actually seemed more anxious than ever. The ones in the shadows, the corners. They read this. But what does it mean? Fleddy asked, frustrated. The three were so busy musing over the log entry that they didn't even notice Sans finished his phone call and turned back toward them. He looked more annoyed than anything. Keep getting calls from this unknown number and then it's nothing but static he pocketed his cell phone and gave them a look of surprise. Geez Louise, don't tell me you can read scientific font, too? They gave him back those one tail waggers are means of saying a yes, as with their previous game of 20 questions. They also whined, desperate for some explanation. A thought occurred to Sans, and he seemed to brighten up. Say, pup if you can read can you also write? The dog's ears perked up, and they wagged their tail furiously. Yes, finally. This could be their chance to get something across to Sans. Sans picked up on the hint, and pulled a pen out of his other coat pocket. He handed it down to them so that they could grab it in their mouth, and flipped over one of the lock pages to a blank space. Then here you go. How about you get down what's so important that you've been chasing me all over Hotland for it despite having limbs and paws now, it turned out that actually writing was even more difficult without fingers. Flay, still in control, suddenly found that practice he'd been putting in writing with his mouth to good use and even then, it still took a lot more time and effort than any of the three would have liked. But after a lot of careful scratching at the paper, they got down what they figured was the most brief and important message possible. Stop Gaster. They dropped the pen, and stared up at Sans expectantly. 
The skeleton just looked down at the writing with confusion almost disappointment. I don't get what young mean, pup. What's gaster? The dog's jaw fell open in shock. Out of all possible responses they could've gotten from Sans, this was those one they expected the least. What does he mean? How does he not know who Gaster is? He's the only one who remembered him in the first place. Does that mean that he's not even here at all? Did we fail the mission? But we're here before the core implosion. Sans didn't look like he had the time to sit and wait for them to finish an internal debate, as he sighed and scooped up the papers and blueprints off the floor. Sorry to cut this short, pub but I can't help you out if you don't give me much to work with the dog scampered about, trying to think of anything else to say or do, but all they could do is whine. I know you're worried, pub, but we've come too far on this to delay it now. Maybe once this experiment is done, and we're all free you can come back and we'll have a much longer chat about what you know. Sound good? Honestly, that didn't sound good at all to them. But what could they even do about it? It seemed like all of their plans had been thrown out of whack. They ran back to the time machine, and then back to Sans, practically growling with frustration. You better hurry along, pup. We'll be starting up the machine soon, and this whole area won't be safe for you. But you'll know soon enough that it's worth what do we do now. Flay, still in control, felt beyond frustrated at this. Ugh. Let's just go. With that, the dog took off running back across the scaffolding, not even caring who noticed them along the way. They left Sans behind, suddenly looking a lot less sure of himself. He looked back down at the scrawled message on the back of the log entry, eye sockets furrowed. In his coat pocket, his cell phone buzzed once again.